fully exonerated Matt Cordell can now rest in peace knowing that his name has been cleared. That is until he's resurrected by a voodoo practitioner to... I, I don't know why. Exactly. But the Maniac Cop is back. And this time, he's in the mood for love. I can see Cordell's Tinder profile now. Ideal woman, kind, loving, and dead. When I was joined for a bloodstream by director William Lustig back in June, he went into detail talking about the many issues that plagued the production of Maniac Cop 3. For instance, the Japanese financiers had issues with Larry Cohen's screenplay. This resulted in Cohen's story being completely gutted. Lustig clashed with the producers over the budget, which was significantly less than that for the second film. Lustig's rough cut then came in at just 51 minutes in length. When he was handed additional pages to shoot written by co-producer Joe Swasson, Lustig said shove them and walked off the project. By the way, on day one of filming Maniac Cop 3, Lustig was informed that after over a year of developing True Romance, that he'd been replaced by Tony Scott. So yeah, it was a rough one. Maniac Cop 3 is a movie that wears its shortcomings not on its sleeve, but on its breast pocket, like a shiny badge. And by that I mean the film's shortcomings are hard to miss. For instance, Maniac Cop 3 is loaded with filler. The opening credit sequence alone feels like it lasts about 15 minutes. It's pretty much all made up of recycled and repeated footage from Part 2 featuring the Maniac Cop spinning his baton around. And speaking of recycled footage, that's not the only time that they reuse footage from Part 2 here. Maniac Comp 3 also kinda has no plot. Why was Cordell brought back? Why is he now seeking a companion? What's up with the voodoo guy? And the Maniac Cop himself just kinda wanders around for two thirds of the movie. He's walking down the street. He's walking across the street. He walks to an old abandoned church, the same church used in John Carpenter's Prince of Darkness. He walks around to the side of the church. He walks up a fire escape. He goes through a door into the church. Every step is chronicled. Then the maniac cop walks to the hospital. Then he stands out in front of the hospital. Then later he's still standing out in front of the hospital. Then when he finally goes inside the hospital, he just kind of lingers in the shadows. Not doing anything. The maniac cop isn't very maniacal here. He's mildly unhinged at best. Robert Davi returns as Detective McKinney, but he seems just as confused as the rest of us here. He spends most of the movie either sitting around a hospital or standing around a crime scene looking completely lost. Davi's character wasn't meant to be center stage this time around, but when Cohen's original script got nixed, Davi's screen time got increased. It's just too bad he had so little to do here. And Davi isn't the only good actor this movie is culpable of wasting. Paul Gleason, Jackie Earl Haley, Julius Harris, Robert Forster, and Caitlin Delaney also co-star. But aside from Haley, the movie does very little with them. We get a couple of nice action sequences, including an extended car chase involving Davi's character in Cordell, while Cordell just happens to be roasting like a Yule Log the entire time. It's another impressive burn stunt. Even more impressive than the burn stunt at the end of part two, because this one goes on and on and on. It was intended to be filler, but it's impressive filler, nevertheless. Some good ideas shine through periodically. There's some commentary on media manipulation and tabloid journalism twisting the truth, which is something that never really happens. The concept of Maniac Cop meets The Bride of Frankenstein could have also been an interesting idea had it been more developed. There's a good movie trapped somewhere inside the meandering, confused mess that is Maniac Cop 3, but unfortunately, it's been read its Miranda rights and it's choosing to remain silent. Forever. I can't really recommend Maniac Cop 3. It's easily the least of the three Maniac Cop films. However, if you are a fan of the film or if you own the other two films already on physical media and you're a completionist and just have to have this one to finish up the trilogy, then this new 4K UHD release from Blue Underground is a must. The picture quality and the sound quality are both stellar on this release. Just like Blue Underground's 4K release for Maniac Cop 2, 
This one is just as impressive. The colors pop, there's a high level of detail and clarity throughout. This release is scanned in 4K from the original uncensored camera negative and is presented with Dolby Vision and a new Dolby Atmos audio mix. And that new Dolby Atmos audio mix sounds killer. I give both the picture quality and the sound quality on this release perfect scores, five out of five. As far as extras are concerned, first up we have Wrong Arm of the Law, the making of Maniac Cop 3. It's 25 minutes and five seconds in length. It includes interviews with Larry Cohen, William Lustig, Joel Swasson, Robert Zadar, uh, Robert Davi, Carolyn Delaney, Gretchen Becker, and more. Uh, they discuss the original story that Larry Cohen envisioned for the film, the financiers not jibing with it, Lustig and the producers clashing behind the scenes, Lustig leaving the production, Swasson coming on to direct the additional 40 minutes of footage, the stunts, the film's legacy, and more. We get 10 minutes and 26 seconds of deleted and extended scenes. We get the theatrical trailer, a poster and still gallery, the original synopsis, and an audio commentary with infamous director Alan Smithy. Now, <laughs> this movie was smithied because Lustig walked off the project, co-producer Joe Swasson came on and finished uh, directing it, but they gave it the Alan Smithy pseudonym. So for this commentary, it's both William Lustig and Joe Swasson. And I got to say, this is an incredibly entertaining fun commentary <laughs> to listen to. They did not get along on the set. However, they've buried the hatchet and um, highly, highly entertaining commentary. One of the best commentaries I've listened to in a long time. This is a killer release for Maniac Cop 3, Badge of Silence, from the fine folks over at Blue Underground. Both the picture quality and the sound quality are phenomenal. We get some great extras, including that incredibly entertaining commentary. If you're a fan of Maniac Cop 3, this release is a must-own. I'll post a link to Blue Underground's website down in the description. Go over and check them out. And if you missed my bloodstream with director William Lustig, I'll post that link in the description. Also, definitely check that out too. Let me know your thoughts on Maniac Cop 3 down in the comments section below. And if you've already picked up this release from Blue Underground, let me know your thoughts on it. If you've still not entered my 50k subscribers Bad Michael Myers mask giveaway, do so. I will be announcing the winners of that giveaway on the 19th. So follow the link in the description and enter for your chance to win your very own Bad Michael Myers mask today. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up and share it on social media. If you're not following me on social media, those links are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. I hope you all out there are having a great, safe, healthy, happy, and horror movie filled holiday season. Take care and until next time, peace. A huge shout out to all my patrons and channel members. I greatly appreciate your generosity and support of my channel. Become a patron today and get early access to videos, have a say in what movies I review, and join me for patron-only live streams. Become a channel member today and get access to exclusive badges and emotes to use when I stream. Those links are in the description. Say hello to the internet, Jeremy. Hello to the internet.